We are making something very interesting in today's video. We are working on fermented porridge from scratch. This is something that we used to take. I remember especially after school, we come from school and we find a cup of hot fermented porridge prepared. And that's why I thought it wonderful to just share with you how to do it from scratch because I'm sharing what I have learned over the years and I'm hopeful that you will enjoy. And the reason why I prefer fermented porridge is because the fermentation process of course works with very good probiotics that will break down a lot of the nutrients in the porridge making it easier for the body to digest them and that's why of course it's always more nutritious to take fermented porridge rather than porridge that hasn't been fermented so i'm hopeful that you will learn something new together with any questions that you might be having that i hope will be answered along the way as we continue so join me Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down just like this one to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple to make at home with ingredients that are most likely available right where you are. So as is always our custom on this this channel we will pray and trust the Lord to grant us a fruitful time as we work through this recipe. Indeed we pray that Father you will grant us your help and your fruitfulness and grant that as we work on this recipe it will be a blessing to me, to my viewer and of course the people who come to our home we pray that you will be glorified as we practice hospitality in Jesus name. Amen. We will need a total of 60 hours in order to ferment our porridge and that's why because I want this porridge for breakfast I will start fermenting it at night. So that's around 7 or 8, it's holiday time so it is well. So I have taken uh, my jug, I prefer to use plastic or a glass jar because that's good for fermenting so I have added in 6 tablespoons of my flour, my uji flour actually you can use any ingredients but just make sure it has some maize flour because maize flour does very well and then I've mixed with cold water and stirred to get it into a light paste because when it's not cooking the paste is rather light but just ensure it's a bit runny not too runny and once you have mixed these two ingredients together we are going to cover with the cover as you can see but I need to show you something that cover has uh, openings on both sides where when the fermented porridge is beginning to emit some gases or carbon dioxide it will have a place to escape so that's why I'm covering it with that so this is the next day 24 hours later you can see it had started to ferment and what I will do, I'm going to add in now four tablespoons of flour. By the way, this is porridge that is enough for a family of four or five. So if you are one person or you have uh, lesser people or you want less porridge, you can work with half the recipe. So this is a total of 10 tablespoons of uh, uji or porridge flour that had already been mixed with some other ingredients. But just ensure that you have maize flour in it. So I will stir in the remaining four tablespoons of flour and some water again to make that fairly runny paste. Not too runny as you can see so be careful with the amount of water you are putting in not too much just to make it slightly runny. So stir until you have no lumps left and then again we will cover with that same cover allowing that uh, space for any gases that are formed as the fermentation process is taking place to escape but this time you will notice when I cover I will cover again with a clean kitchen towel because once it begins to ferment 
it will start to attract fruit flies so i like to cover and then i place in a place in my kitchen where it will not be disturbed or my pantry but just make sure you don't forget this time we will do it for the remaining hours that is one and a half days so up to the next evening and then the morning so i hope you're following me so you can see it's fermented really well and that's uh, how it looks you will see that uh, the rest of the fruity uh, water was uh, hidden kinda under the flower but it will look anything like that sometimes just frothy as well once it's fermented you can see it's forming those very nice bubbles uh, that show that it has fermented really well i am showing you this as i have my water on the fire already uh, heating up so that we can work with hot water actually you can see that delightful texture of our fermented porridge so we want the water hot because we don't want to take too much time stirring our porridge because you have to keep stirring it so that it doesn't form lumps so i'm working with two liters of water for my table 10 tablespoons of flour that i had heaped on my tablespoon as you saw so there we go our water is beginning to heat up we will wait for it to simmer and then continue so you can see it's simmering or oh, it's forming a lot of mist that it's interfering with the camera lens but i hope you can see it has simmered very well so now we will begin by pouring in our fermented porridge and ensure the moment you start pouring in is the moment you start stirring immediately because you don't want it to form any lumps now whatever is left in the container will be good for us to start fermenting our porridge for the next day but if you feel that there is so much flour still left in your jug or in your pitcher as you saw I just added in a little water and even that little pause is not good for our porridge because you just need to keep stirring it continuously by the way the water that I have used is cold please use cold water if you have to remove any extra um, mixture in your pitcher because or jug because we will need it that way in order to ferment uh, our next porridge for the next day you can see now we will stir until it starts boiling once it has boiled really well then we are sure that our porridge will be smooth and good to go so don't pause just keep stirring until it starts boiling and boiling rather vigorously so i'm still continuing to stir until i see that vigorous boil as you will see you can see now it's starting to vigorously boil so that's good for us so we don't have to continue stirring so once it's starts boiling rather vigorously that's when i'm going to add in my sugar because i like my sugar to boil and to cook as my porridge is also cooking so add in your sugar of course also there are those who don't like sugar in their porridge you can skip this so once you've added in your sugar stir until it's evenly stirred in the porridge and once it's evenly stirred in the porridge we will now cover and when we cover the porridge by the way this is one of the ways whereby I save on my gas or fuel or whatever you're using because once you cover with your lid especially when your lid is not allowing in too much air like this one I mean it's just covering evenly usually your porridge should continue simmering and even when you lower the heat significantly because i'm going to lower this heat to the lowest my gas cooker has been designed to get to its lowest by its manufacturer this will still let my porridge continue simmering really well so i will allow it to simmer for about 15 minutes then our porridge will be ready now i will pick the same pitcher that i use or jug as you can see i just rinsed out uh, what was left and poured it into the porridge but usually when you don't 
rinse it off too much because i don't know if you can see but there's some bits of uh, porridge flour fermented porridge flour that is left that is very good because now you don't have to ferment your porridge for too long you know the 60 hours that we used or two and a half days now with that a uh, bit of fermented flour still in the jug that will be good for us to set our next porridge going we will only ferment it for one day so now that i have mixed in my flour my 10 tablespoons or whatever you need and uh, starting with the water by the next day in the morning when i need my porridge or depending on the time that you timed our puji flour will be fermented enough for us to use it for our porridge So now this is 15 minutes later. I also washed my wooden spoon that I had used because I had used it when the porridge was still raw. So I washed it and now I am going to give it a final stir and our porridge is ready. I also want you to just remember that the boiling point of porridge is much higher than the boiling point of the normal hot water. So what I mean is porridge is really hot. You will need to cool it so that you're able to take it. Even if you want to take it hot, just ensure to cool it a bit. And usually I will just get a pail of basin, kitchen basin that has cold water. Ensure that uh, the basin is not higher than the porridge because when you're placing this pan into that pail, the water can easily pour into the porridge but when it's less you will just stir it in while it is in that cold water and once the cold water starts getting hot you can now have your porridge ready for you to take and if it, you're working with young children pour out the initial water that you had used, used to cool your porridge add in some more cold water into your pail and repeat the process so that it can cool even further with fermented porridge, I will usually not add any citric acid to my porridge because it's already sour by virtue of the fact that it is fermented. So try this and enjoy your fermented porridge. So that's our fermented uji recipe or porridge recipe that I'm hopeful I have shared in a way that it is very simple and straightforward and you can follow along and also make yourself a cup of fermented porridge. And one of the questions I know people will ask often is, what if my porridge is too heavy? I have given you the ingredients that I personally use and the amount of water that I use so that it is just the right consistency. But in case it gets too heavy, ensure that your porridge has boiled for a few minutes so that all the ingredients can hold together really well once it has started boiling let it boil for a few minutes and then after that you can now add in your hot water to make sure that and to mix it very seriously by the way though i don't want you to try this but i remember when we were growing up we would still add in cold water and somehow it would uh, just hold together the reason being you have allowed it a, a few minutes not two not three even five just to make the ingredients hold together in a way that even when you add in liquid and star or milk and star really hard it will still hold together but i would say it's safer to use hot water of course if you have any other questions feel free to ask them in the comments and i'm hopeful that i can respond as much as i can uh, because i know i mean we don't all know everything but what i know i am ready to share check out this playlist right here of other kienyeji dishes kienyeji of course means they are local to our country to our culture i have done quite a number of them right here i'm hopeful that you will enjoy these recipes as well when you check out this playlist so thank you thank you so much for being here look out for our next recipe again very simple i hope to do a few of the fermented uh, recipes uh, just to help us get those probiotics including yogurt that i've done on this channel that just helps you with your gut health together with other fermented recipes that I hope to share in future. Uh, so see you in that next video or in these videos right here.